food, something to be treasured. So on harvesting them and going after them, one of the things that has been noted and one of the things that has been instituted is a minimum gauge size. In other words, the gauge, we measure it from, as I explained there, the, the eye socket to the back of the carapace. Anything below that automatically goes back into the water. Now, so that we don't have a trap full of little lobsters, we have in traps escape portholes. We have vents that we put in them. I, I can't, not sure you can see this. We have vents that are in there. These allow small lobsters to walk right out. They stay on the bottom. They hopefully don't come up to the surface, leave room for the big ones that we want to keep and harvest. Not only do we have a minimum on the gauge size, we have a maximum on our gauge size through the harvesting areas now. Maximum gauge in our area in Massachusetts waters is approximately five inches. Now, that puts it at about a four, four and a half pound lobster. So anything larger than that had to come from outside our area. And outside our area, I mean Canada. Canada does not, as of yet, have a maximum gauge. They have the same minimum gauge, three and a quarter, but they don't have a maximum. So if you get a large lobster, if somebody wanted, say, a 10-pound lobster, you could get it. You could actually go to a market and probably buy a 20-pound lobster. There are 20-pound lobsters that are harvested. Those are not big enough to get into our traps, so they are caught by mobile gear out on George's Bank or offshore that may have picked them up, and they're allowed a certain number that they can bring in of these as a bycatch. They may be going for codfish or something, inadvertently catch a large lobster. But why, why doesn't Massachusetts let you get one bigger than the five inches? Well, all right, one of the reasons on, on the maximum on the gauge is the fact that uh, as they get larger, the females, primarily this is designed for the female lobsters, one of the reasons is that the larger the lobster, the more eggs that she can produce. As a result, the more eggs she can produce, the more future lobsters that we would have. Uh, the females that have eggs on them, that are bearing eggs, very visible on the bottom side, we can't harvest. All right, we do have a clip of that too. Yes. And so you're looking for the... We're looking for visible eggs on the bottom of a, of a, a lobster. Of a, a lobster. do is we will automatically put back in the water any lobster that has eggs on it. We have taken to uh, guarantee that lobster won't be harvested again, even if she lets those eggs go in the water column, by marking a little notch on the tail. This will last through um, a period of maybe a year or two. And then if we have, if we catch a lobster that has let's say no eggs but has a notch or part of a notch we can't keep it it's a proven breeder this marking system uh, goes throughout uh, the lobster harvesting area the reason and rationale is the fact that that lobster with those dark eggs underneath a female lobster of say uh, 10 or 15 pound size may hold up to 100,000 eggs. Wow. 100,000 eggs, when those lobster eggs, when those eggs hatch, 
they become part of the plankton mass on the surface and they look like mosquito wigglers again back to the insect system mm -hmm. they look like little mosquito wigglers and they they become part of the food chain for everything they're eaten as that lobster grows it molts a lobster sheds its exoskeleton. This is to grow as it gets larger. An insect grows by shedding. It actually crawls right out of that shell. It increases in size by 10 to 15 percent. For that lobster to reach the legal size we go back to, that one and a, a three and a quarter inch size, takes about eight to 10 years. It takes approximately 20 to 24 molts to reach that size. Of the 100,000 eggs that went into the water column, maybe one or two reaches that size. Mm -hmm. The rest gets into the food system. So what we've got here is we have to maintain the sustainability. There's a lot of these creatures out there. We want to guarantee it by releasing all of these lobsters. When we go to the maximum gauge on the female lobster, for example, and we talk about that, uh, people always ask about the big lobsters. Now we have Obviously, we have a, an awful lot of big lobsters that are still walking around on the bottom out there. I'm not sure as to whether or not uh, people have an opportunity to eat them, but they always say the bigger they are, the tougher they are. Not so. Mm. Here's, a, here's a claw of a, uh, of a lobster here. This was one that actually years ago um, I ate. <laughs> it was a 28-pound lobster, um, and it fed 13 of us. And this one here uh, was not tough at all. Uh, there's an awful lot of meat that goes in it. The lobster's claws themselves, there are two claws that, mm. that do the function on them. There's a large claw like this that we call the crusher claw. And that has the capacity, even on a one or two pound lobster, to break a clam easily to get the meat. The other one is a pincher or a quick claw. That pincher claw will, will work on it. Um, the, the large lobster is a lobster of this size. It's very difficult to determine the age. Again, going back to the fact that that smaller lobster was uh, eight to 10 years to reach probably a one pound size. They've only been studying the lobsters for about 75 years. So we know that a 18, 20 pound lobster is approximately 75 years old. How often they molt after that, we have no idea. The Massachusetts Lobstermen's Association has, we have a 38 pound lobster mounted. Wow. And people often ask, well, approximately how old is it? 200 years. It was like uh, uh, the people that study the giant Galapagos tortoises. They've been looking at them for 200 years. They look at the same one, he hasn't changed. Is he 200 years old? Is he 400 years no. old? How old is that animal? No. Once we know that, it could be 200 years He's old. He's not like us graying. No, no, we got a better, yeah, we got kind of long <laughs> in the tooth for us type of a thing, but in the sense of, of animals like this, it's very difficult. And you do have different colored ones, too. There are different colored lobsters. Uh, uh, pigmentation colors, there was recently a lot of news articles about a yellow lobster that's down on the Cape, and, and we've caught different variations. Um, blue is the uh, one of the color uh, pigments and blue probably one in five or six million lobsters is blue so there are some that have been harvested I've caught a few blue with blue colored denim almost this color um, different ones yellow red uh, polka dot in between maybe one in 25 30 million albinism and white lobsters albino lobsters one in a hundred million wow. very rare mm. so those animals are uh, in, a, in a sense they're still out there the um, back to the female with the uh, eggs we release all of the female lobsters that have eggs all of the lobsters that have a v-notch on them all of the lobsters that are sublegal all of the lobsters that are above the gauge so basically we're out trying to harvest a very limited scope to guarantee that we have a sustainability in that in that uh, whole resource. Are there fines involved if you get caught with the <coughs> Yeah, the, the, uh, there's yeah. not just that. Uh, we're very careful about it, um, and we hope to spread the word that, that the um, even though there are only 1,400 commercial licenses, 900 active, families can have a license. You could go to uh, the Division of Marine Fisheries and get a family lobster pot license. 